Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. More and more North Dakotans are dying for a fix. Thank you for joining us tonight. We look beyond the latest Grand Forks County crime statistics tonight that show heroin use is a problem. On Valley News, as Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us, heroin is a problem that's growing across the entire state of North Dakota. Heroin is no longer the drug found only on the streets of big cities. It's right here in towns across North Dakota. Grand Forks County saw drug busts rise from 47 in 2014 to 61 last year. And more of those busts were for heroin. Authorities say tougher meth laws in North Dakota may actually be increasing heroin use. It's tougher for folks to get the cold medicines and other ingredients needed to make meth. It is um, scaling back the availability of, of the resources to make meth. So I think in that absence, the, the heroin market is, is coming in to, to, to try to replace that. And experts say prescription painkillers contain opioids, the same chemical found in heroin. Once folks get hooked on painkillers and run out, heroin can fill the need. If someone does have a history of addiction to either opiates or opioids, and if they go to a withdrawal state, heroin can be used to help um, mitigate or perpetuate the same behaviors. Nationwide, North Dakota is named as a state, having a statistically significant overdose death rate increase. In fact, overdose death rates are up 125% according to the most recent statistics. There were 20 overdose deaths in 2013, compared to 43 deaths in 2014. But there is some good news. So we've seen a, a continual in decrease in heroin use among our high school students. However, North Dakota has seen an increase in the um, drug and opioid overdose deaths. And while heroin here is not as big a problem as in some big cities, it is a problem that's apparently growing in North Dakota. In Grand Forks, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. A survey of North Dakota high schoolers shows the number of students who have tried heroin fell from 2.4% in 2007 to 1.2% in 2015. It's still a slippery slope out there for some drivers, along with light flurries in spots. What do we have to be concerned about tonight? Let's find out from Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson in First Weather. Hutch? Well, for the most part, the wind has really died down here in the southern Red River Valley. It's been pretty pleasant, even though cloudy skies once again prevail. We are getting reports of snow near Faustin, Bemidji, and Duluth right now, even though it's not showing up too well on the radar. An isolated flurry not out of the question this evening. Uh, by and large, when we look up at what's screaming through Saskatchewan right now, a little bit of mixed precipitation. That'll be heading our way during the overnight hours. But for the evening, Andrea, it looks fairly quiet, with the only challenge being the already slippery road conditions. Temperatures falling slowly into the teens tonight. Wind generally under 10 miles per hour. Pretty quiet. Overnight, some of that stuff near Saskatoon will be heading our way. I'll have a detailed forecast for you to plan your day here in just a few more. All right, thank you, Hutch. Mm -hmm. And you can stay up to date on the latest conditions anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team weather app to get the latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Just search VNL Weather in the App Store. Authorities are investigating whether a GoFundMe account set up for three boaters who drowned on Lake of the Woods last fall was a scam. Keith Ayers, Justin Hochtvet, and Cody Ostendorf all died when their boat capsized in rough water. A supposed friend of the families set up a GoFundMe account that raised over $27,000. However, it appears that at least some of that money was never given to the families. The Lake of the Woods County Sheriff's Department has issued a statement saying no arrests have been made and no charges have been filed, but an investigation into the matter is ongoing. The Grand Forks Police Department is spreading the word about two people of interest. They posted this picture on their Facebook page saying the Criminal Investigations Bureau is trying to identify them because they may have information of value to the police. Anyone with information is asked to call the number right there on your screen. Former MMA fighter Antonio Borden has been found guilty of gross sexual imposition and aggravated assault after a May 2015 incident in Jamestown. NewsDakota.com reports 21-year-old Borden was accused of assaulting a woman when she allegedly refused to sleep with him. 
According to the reports, when the woman was found by police, her voice was hoarse and she had marks on her neck. The woman said Borden forced sexual contact with her. He faces up to life in prison if convicted. A sentencing date has not been set.